and ladies and welcome back to Scarlet Hollow, the darkest timeline. Now, um, this video is coming out on Halloween. Um, just a quick update. At the time of my previous recordings, I didn't know the exact date that episode 4 was going to be released for Scarlet Hollow. And I was still sticking to the information provided by the developers, which was going to be released around Halloween. Um, that information has, yet, has since changed, which is they've announced that it's coming out on the 22nd of November. So, um, apologies for those of you who might have got your hopes up. We just have to wait a little bit longer. So, without further ado, let's dive back into Scarlet Hollow and pick up where Kerry left off with Kerry. Things are starting to get a bit, uh, well, tense. There was an unpleasant meal at Reese's house, and now we're going to an exorcism. And uh, judging from the last time that happened, we went to somewhere strange in this place. Unfortunate things occurred. So let's uh, let's dive in and see how this particular chestnut goes, shall we? You all cross over the threshold and enter Oscar's living room. Family photos line the walls, and stacks of books sit. Un sit, sit comfortably on wooden furniture. Keen eye, aside from a painting on the floor, this living room feels too normal, too human to be haunted. Look. Okay. Looks pretty normal for now, says Oscar. I don't remember that picture being on the floor, but that could have been that could be non-supernatural. None of my equipment is picking up anything around the picture, says Stella. But I'll set a camera in case it falls again. Could be important evidence. You might want to save your cameras for Rosalina's room. That's why I've seen the ghost manifest, says Oscar. I wonder if the ghost will even show this with this many people around. Wait, is it just me or does it suddenly feel colder? Matters Oscar. It sure does. I definitely feel that, says Stella. The temperature gun says actually a couple of degrees colder. That's normal. Rooms and hallways are sometimes colder than other parts of the house, says Kanika. Whoa, a genuine cold spot. I've got to snap a pick for posterity, says Zane. Is that it? This isn't very scary, says Rosalina. Explore, wait. Let's just see. Let's go with explore. Wait, says Kerry. Rosalina, if the ghost manifests in your room, shouldn't you have seen it? I've only seen the stain, says Rosalina. Dad made me switch rooms with him way before we moved out. I wasn't about to let my daughter sleep in a haunted bedroom. I spent most of my nights on the couch before we set up shop in the library. Even if there is something back there, I'm not scared of it. I'm mad at it, says Rosalina. And she's relaxing. I'm scared. Let's just leave. All right, gang. I think we've covered the ground yet. That's a Scooby-Doo reference. If I've ever seen one. Let's see. Yeah, let's do it. Great. We found the ghost. Case closed. Good work, team. No way. We're not going anywhere. We pro we'd promised we'd we promised we'd get rid of the ghost, and I won't leave until we fill that promise, says Stella. Stella, I've been meaning to ask, mutters Kanika, do you actually know how to get rid of a ghost? How exactly are we going to get rid of it if we find one? Well, my ghost hunting kit has symbols from every major religion, assorted holy books, a bunch of salt, and some jars for ectoplasm. And in worst ca if worst comes to the worst, we can always use the Ouija board to politely ask it to leave. I, dr I think I'd rather not take the chance, mutters Oscar. One ghost is enough to deal with. I don't much like the thought of opening a door for something worse. Whoa, you've never been this superstitious, Dad, mutters Rosalina. This ghost really has you freaked out. Okay, mutters Oscar. Take a deep breath before continuing. Let's, uh, let's head to Ro Rosalina's room. Follow me. Uh, 
that feeling again, like the mind, like the door to the clinic, a dusty, suffocating, dizzying feeling. Something is in the in this house, but whatever it is, it's a ghost of something worse you aren't saw. Whoa, Mother Stella. This is where I've seen it. It appears on top of the stain, mutters Oscar. Weird, I'm not getting anything. It's not even cold. It's the same temperature as the living room. Nothing on the EMF, either, mutters Stella. Then your equipment is wrong. The stain is definitely paranormal. I've scrubbed it out many times, to, too many times to count, and it just keeps coming back. It's just a stain, Dad. Can't we just cover it back up? I don't mind sleeping here. Hmm, let's get scientific about this. If you scrub the stain out of bunts, maybe this is part of a summoning ritual, says so Stella. If you all are offering a free carpet cleaning, be my guest, mutters the man. Have you tried tearing up the carpet? It's probably just a rusty pipe leaking through the floor. Are you sore? You scrubbed it out. Let's try that one. Totally it's the rusty pipe leaking through the floor. Says so Kerry. That was my first thought too. Have you all tried tearing up the carpet? In a house owned by the government? No way. I'm not messing with their carpets. I'd rather scrub ghost blood out of the carpet every day than have the government take me to court for destroying their property. Says Oscar. It could be a, it could be a good idea. This could be a sign of structural damage, says Kanika. And I'm sure the government would rather know about it now than wind up with a bigger problem down the line, right? I saw they'd rather you discovered some structural damage now before it gets much worse. Now, uh, that seems to be left in. Plus, there might be something written under there. In blood, says Stella. Only one way to be sore. Stella excitedly starts tugging at the corners of the carpet. Oh dear, says Oscar. You're doing the government a favour, really. Stella pulls back the carpet, revealing a hat. The floor around it's stained in reddish brown. Keen eye. It's a broken seal around the edge. Whatever the carpet, whoever carpeted over the hat didn't want anyone going down there. Okay, maybe I don't want to sleep in here, mutters Rosalina. Let's go with Kenai. It's a broken seal around its edges. Someone doesn't want us down there. Yeah, let's go with Kenai. It's a broken seal around its edges. Someone doesn't want us down there, this is Kerry. Yeah, but how long ago was it sealed up? Whoever did this has got to have been long gone, right? Says Stella. There's no basement in this house, mutters Oscar. At least we weren't told about a basement. And look, all the red stuff is coming from underneath. Oh yeah, this is super haunted, all right. You've got a basement chock full of ghosts, I can just feel it. All You all know last month was super rainy. It's clearly been a long time since anyone stepped a foot into the basement or crawling space, whatever it is, under the hat, that hatch. There must be a leak that flooded the whole on the whole area under the house. The water dissolved, the chalk around the edges around the edge and leaked through to the carpet, and it's red because North North Carolina has red ass dirt. It's as simple as that. It's not mud. It's blood, mutters Oscar. Human blood. I tested it. Maybe you tested it wrong. It's it can't be blood, right? Mutters Kanika. Whatever it is, I need to know what's down there, says Rosalina. I need to know what's been under my bed all these years. Yeah. There's an old hatch in the floor that someone tried to seal up. We're not leaving until we explored every nook and cranny, says Stella. Have you considered that they may have tried sealing it up because it's unsafe? Counters Kanika. Uh, do you think the floating, the, uh, do you think the flooding could have made the house unstable, says Zane? I'm all in on ghost hunting, but I don't know if I would crawl into another dangerous crevasse. I'm going, I'm going for it, says Stella. You come to in Oscar's living room. You can't tell what time it is. Your friends are nowhere, to, nowhere in sight. The building feels colder, and there's something about the air that feels wrong. It's stale, with an undercurrent of mould and earth. You feel claustrophobic, as though you're in a coffin, each breath depleting what little oxygen is left.
Hello? Anybody there? There's no reply. Call somebody. Yeah, let's, let's call somebody. Call the cops, call Stella, call Tabitha, call Kanika. Let's call the cops. Die 991. Hello? What's your hello? Is this some kind of prank? Franklin, come listen to this. Is this a kind of old time radio so? It's just repeating the same phrase over and over. Somebody's trying to creep us out to Sir, Sir Full. Now hold on just a minute. Ain't this a, the area code from Truro? I'll be down. Listen here, Kerry. We know that's you. You've got some nerve calling us with a juvenile, juvenile prank like this. Damn it, if it ain't creepy, though. Eddie? Eddie? Repeating like that? Do we know any Eddies? Just hang up, Higby. Got to keep those lines key for real callers. We'll deal with Kerry later. Yeah, let's try to call Stella. The phone rings. Eddie? You can hear someone something deeply violent on the other end and dial and then a dial tone. Call Kanika. The phone rings. Eddie? Same voice you've heard when called Stella, uttering the same phrase. You once again hear the same deeply violent on the other end and then a dial tone. Oh, so we call Tabitha. This is the thing, like, Kerry's probably freaking out right now. Yeah, it's just gonna go cab to her. Your phone rings. I've been looking all over you. Where did you... What? Why are you saying that? I, I didn't say anything, says Carrie. Yeah, okay, I get it. Pulling a funny lion prank on your poor long-suffering cousin. Playing some creepy old-timey radio clip all over the phone. The Kanika put you up to this, whatever. Just come home. I'm sick of chasing after you. Record us to next. That's enough. Put all phone away. This clearly isn't going getting you anywhere. Go to the library. You have no idea how long you've been out, but the lighting in the living room is much lighter than your last than your last memories of being awake. Everyone else must have gone home and left you here. You turn around, leaving Oscar's house to return to the library. That's funny. You don't remember there being a second door at the end of this corridor. Keen eye, unless you're mistaken, that's the door to, door to Oscar's house. The door you just left. One second, folks. Sorry about the folks that are on to the phone. So, unless we're mistaken, the door to Oscar's house, the door was just left. Turn back around. Turn back around. It's the same door you just saw, only now it's in front of you again. Turn back around. Invert it again. One more time. Clearly, you just forgot how to turn 180 degrees. Nothing else would make any sense. How many times you got to do this? There's only one door. There has only ever been one door. As you turn for the fifth time, you feel a sudden shove behind you as you lurch towards the door. It, it flings itself open, and just before you hit it, hit just before you hit it, and you find yourself on the other side. And we've got an achievement. Something isn't right. You feel like the late summer afternoon. The air is warm and wet and the scent of flowers drifts on the breeze. Movement stirs as a figure cloaked in shadow raise, rises to attention. Who are you? What are you doing on my property? Says Stella. Yeah, holy shit, Stella, you scared me. Did you say Eddie? No one's called me, called me back in a long time. It's Edwina now. I'm not a child anymore, says so Stella. Wasn't that my great grandmother's name? Does Carrie? I wish I could say the same. I could. I would, should have stayed. You should have stayed gone, and you absolutely shouldn't have shown up here of all places, to Stella. If you're caught, I don't think you understand what father might do. Uh, 
Um, let's see. Oh my, I wouldn't want to cross five. I'll still be away at once. Let's go street smart, yeah. And let's play along. Oh my, I wouldn't want to cross five. I'll still be away at once. Status carry. Kenai has a flash of play, a flash of pain as I tells you that she's keenly aware of everything that's happening right now. She is in agony. I can't. It's not that easy for me. My brothers were sent to the Western Front and now I am the only Scarlet left besides father. I have responsibilities, Charlie. Uh, let's see. Stop it. I'm going to figure a way out. Wait to free you. Still, I'm so sorry. Play along. I'm more important than your responsibilities. I know you still love me. Yeah, let's play along. Let's go with that one. You should just get out of town while you still can. Whatever you came back for, it's not worth it to Stella. Let her go, please. Let's try that one. Like, probably Carrie's terrified right now and she's not going to basically pick a fight with an angry ghost. She's gone along with the shadow in the corner of the room. You're alone in this strange garden. Go back to where you came here. Yeah? Like, Carrie's gonna get out of Todd's. You turn as you do so, a single door standing solidly. So, a solid tree in the middle of the garden appears before you. Enter, walk past the door, turn back. Let's try and walk past the door. The door shouldn't lead anywhere, it's just a door. And the only thing behind it is more of the garden. You decide to walk past it wherever Stella went isn't through there. When you step forward though, as if, if as if the room lurches away from you, or perhaps it's as it's as if you're, you're, you yourself are standing still. Turn back. You're just going to turn around every time you see a door, aren't you? As if the door follows you as you turn, there's no going back. Yeah. The thing is, Carrie's got like good street smarts, so she really doesn't want to be playing along with this thing. Because this thing is just tormenting her and she knows it. She wants to get out. You, wa you walk up to the door and open it. Bells ring as a cacophony rages outside. The door in front of you pulsates as figures unseen bang against it. The shady figure from the garden sits in the corner, ever so slightly more defined. Yeah, because there was that figure in the corner. Rosalina, father has left town, Charlie. We are moving to a new home, a new house, okay? Yep, you should have just stayed in the library. I can't believe I'm going to have to rescue you again. Let's go with that one. You should have just stayed in the library. I can't believe I'm going to have to rescue you again, says Kerry. You can't come back, says Rosalina. We've got to live somewhere else now. But that will be fun, right? There will be new kids to play with. You can sell them your little dolls, sweetie. We don't have much time. Um... Let's go, this thing is horrible, this whole thing is horrible, I hate it here. No, she can't come. I never want you to say her name again, do you hear me? You aren't friends with the Scarlets. We aren't friends with the Scarlets anymore, says Rosalina. Oh god, we're outside. Are those torches? We don't have time, Charlie. We have to go right now. Rosalina is whisked away, leaving you behind an empty room. As she departs, the front door stops pounding and opens into a beckoning white void. And before you have a chance to think, another door creaks open on what you thought was the ceiling. There you are, says Wayne. This is quite a maze, isn't it? And absolutely crawling with these miserable little parasites. 
bottom feeders, says Wayne. Yeah, let's just try and talk to Wayne. Like, Kerry's got no clue what's going on. Not to you again, says Kerry. Is there any way to greet a potential ally? As he approaches, a smell hits you. Sweetening, sweating, suffocating. Yeah. Sweating, suffocating flesh with a tins of the saccharine and stomach churning scent of decay. Shall we find an end to this little maze? Well, down the rabbit hole, run into the black void, but when you're running past him, step into the white void. Uh. He's come from that way. The white void isn't great. Let's run into the black void. Let's try that. You're not friends with this guy. You're not friends with this guy. You hurry towards the door he entered from, closing your eyes so not to think about the impossibilities of the room. As you feel the door in your hand, you hurl yourself over the threshold and stand behind you. You're outside and it's night. A false moon looming massively in the painted sky. Wayne is gone. The night feels thick and warm, insects lively, their calls unnaturally t tinny. Actually, in this one instance, folks, I know it's really rare for me to do this, I never do this normally in my games, but I think I will go to the auto, and I think I will actually go through the door. I thought going through, because they, to be honest, um, I thought going through the black door would get us out. So let's go for the white. For, I'm going to go for the right void because I want what to basically. She doesn't trust like Kerry doesn't trust Wayne, but this is so f out of her comfort zone that she's probably going to stick with him because she's got no other choice. You walk past him and into the white void. You're outside and it's night. A false moon looming massively in the painted sky. Wayne is gone. Okay, so it didn't matter. Which way we did it. The night feels thick and warm. Insects lively. Their calls are naturally tinny. Everything feels warped and wrong. Like you're listening to record fished from the bottom of a pond. Unless your eyes are playing tricks on you, the shadow in the corner keeps getting closer. Kinika. Oh, you poor dear. I've been keeping track of you. Scuttering around town like a tomcat. You've fallen hard for Miss Edwina, haven't you? Like, if you're trying to scare me, it's not working, stammers Kerry. There's no need to be embarrassed, says Kanika. Your secret is safe with me. You know, I never did approve of what the Scarlets did to your family, and what it did to the two of you young'uns. Childhood sweethearts, just think how lovely it would be if you could just be happy together. That's what you want, isn't it? I have to say, playing through this... I get, I get the suspicion that this character who Kanika represents, who I think is probably a descendant um, of Kanika's bloodline, um, is is going to basically be someone we're going to have to be worried about in the future. Kinai, are you mad? Are you mad because Edwina and Charles' romance didn't work out? Let's go with that, Kinai. Are you mad because Edwina and Char Charlie's romance didn't work out, says Kerry? I'm sure by now you've realised a young lady doesn't plan on leaving with you, but it's not for lack of desire, as you know well. It's Enoch. Even if you drag her over the town limits, his hold over her would make sure neither of you were ever happy again. Just think what happened to your poor mother and father. Do you want that to be, want that to be the two of you, says Kanika? This feels so manipulative. Who is Enoch? Is he one of the older, Scar older Scarlets? The last room. That's what happened to your parents, isn't it?
Who's Enoch? Yeah, let's go. For... Let's go with that. Who's Enoch? Is he one of the older Scarlet's stutters carry? The powers at work here are stronger than you ever than even your love could withstand. You need to break the bonds holding her here. Then you can both go free, says Kanika. No more misfortune, not for you. Not for anyone else bold enough to step foot outside the hollow. Kanika mimes handing you something, though her hand is empty. Everything you need to know is on this map. Street smart. Something about this woman doesn't sit right. She must have some sort of ulterior motive. Yeah, this is the feeling I get from reading the text. Like she's trying to get you to, to do something or go somewhere by trying to appear to be a smiling face. What's that about misfortune and stepping for the side of hollow? The hollow? So I said the hollow. Is the town cursed? Oh, an item to... An item to quest for when I get out of here. Hmm, breaking bonds, requiring a map, sounds like a quest. Yeah, what's about this with this amount of misfortune stepping foot outside of the holler? Let's go with that. Kerry stutters. Is this, is this place cursed? That's where you'll find them. You'll need her there. Then read what I've written down. And be careful, says Kinika. Good luck to both of you. I hope you get your happiness. And then she's gone. It's trying to get rid of me, says Wayne. It'll have to try harder, he mutters as he clambers through the moon. It's trying to get rid of me. Okay, talk. Let's go with... What's doing this? What a carry. A resonance, a ghost, whatever it is you call it. The leftovers of human existence, festering and forgotten, feeding on the energy of a more powerful being to do this. Pathetic, spits Wade. Why are you following me? Clearly you need protecting. I'm just looking out for you, says Wayne. Let's go with that one. So are you in tab for her? Was that a thing? This body knew her well, says Wayne. Am I dead? Of course not. I would never let something so weak harm you, let alone kill you, says Wayne. Let's go with this one. What the hell is going on in this town, mutters Kerry. I'm sure you'll be able to piece it together soon enough, says Wayne. I'd rather you find out on your own first. That's the whole, the only way you can really know who to trust, and then I can finally tell you more. There is so much to discuss when the time comes. What are you? I'm a friend, states Wayne. You know the way out? Oh, soon, but in the meantime, you'll have nothing to fear. I am watching over you, says the figure. I really rather you didn't. Thanks, I appreciate that. Thanks, I appreciate that. Not, uh, not worrying about myself, I'm worried about my friend. Let's go with... I really rather you didn't. Let's go with that one. I really rather you didn't. I'm afraid you have no say, especially as long as you find yourself in such dangerous situations, counters waned. Continue forward. You continue forward through an uncanny underbrush. Once again, you find yourself separated and alone. A low, a long wooden corridor stands before you, littered with bottles and rails. Zane pops up. A figure rises to attention, blocking your way. I'm afraid he doesn't have long. If there's anything you need to say to him, I'd say it now, says Zane. As Zane is swept away, the room pills itself to you, and you find yourself looming over a deathbed. Oscar lies in its centre, looking pitifully small. I'm sorry, boy. Sorry I let, let my troubles drive your mama away, and sorry those troubles mean I'm leaving you all alone now.
So that must be the ghost dad, Matus Kerry. Damn it, Junior. How many times do I have to tell you I tried to stop it from happening, but that damn snake Enoch went behind my back. So you're saying Enoch was the one responsible for the mind collapse. People really need to learn to let things go. Let's go with that one. People really need to learn how to let things go, Matus Kerry. You're right, I've been using that excuse for far too many years. At a certain point, a man has to accept when he's dug his own grave. They may have my they may have run me out of town, but they didn't put the bottle in my hand still. They destroyed our legacy boy. Both our names are cursed with that history. I'll be dead and gone soon, but I won't be able to rest. Not until our name is cleared, not until you can pass on this name with pride. This is my only request, Charlie. Go back there, tell people the truth, try to find proof. I don't know what you'll have to do, but please. I know I ain't been the best father, but I'm no murderer. I'm guessing this request didn't really pan out. If Scarlet were exposed for the collapse, Tabitha and I wouldn't be around. Is this why you're getting close to Edwin in the garden? Yeah, let's go with that one. I'm guessing this quest didn't really pan out if the skulls were exposed with the collapse. Tabitha and I wouldn't be around, matters Kerry. Damn it, boy, I may not have till the morning. Promise me, promise you'll go back and avail least so that Enoch bastard what for. Nope. You watch Soska's body seizes and falls through the seat, taking the rattling pile of bottles with him. Such theatrics, mutters Wayne. What a waste of time. Why force yourself to see any of this? People always think their own experiences are so important. What does that what does any of that of it matter? Talk. Let's go with Street Smarts. So you're still stuck here too. We're being kept separated, but I have a feeling it'll be over soon. And the exit won't be hard to find. Do you know what it's trying to tell me? Yes, and it's trivial, mutters Wayne. Don't worry yourself with it. Are my friends dead? They're alive. I'm not sure they'll stay that way. Yeah. At this point, Carrie is probably more grateful for Wayne being there than being on her own. Let's move on. Let's, says Wayne. You move back to the bed to quickly, to quietly leave through the hole Oscar left behind and crawl, crawl through. For the first time, you and Wayne enter a new room at the same time. The two of you find yourselves huddled under a large table. Stella stares through your, you in indecipherable murmurs and suffering feet echo from the ends of the table. They're so lovely, says Stella. Are you sure I can keep one? You must have worked very hard on them. Keen eye. We've got to be near the end, right? This music is the same song and it's that started playing when Stella first sewed up. Just let the scene play out, mutters Wayne. There's no use trying to communicate with, 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 with whatever resonance or your little friend. I'll try to keep it away from my brothers, so don't smash it. Though I wish I could make it more like, move it like you can. And you can you and you can do the voices. You know, you probably would make a real money if you put on a show for people. Oh, so that's what everyone's been moving so weirdly while you've been possessed, right? He's the thing. Got a thing for puppets. Please don't engage with it while I try to find another door. Travelling so? And you want me there too? Oh, could we go to towns along the beach? I've heard the outer banks are the most beautiful place in the world. I wish I could go back in time to whenever this was and tell them everything I know. Nope, no, she's going to remain silent. You quietly, let the, you quietly let the scene finish playing out. Yeah, Carrie doesn't care about the ghost or the, the past, so she doesn't really care. Thank you, Charlie. I've always wanted to see the ocean. Everything crashes to a f to thunderous black before you and w or Wayne 
and get in another word. A single spotlight remained, illuminating a trapdoor in the centre of the stage. You feel drawn to it. It opens. You feel a southern behind you and you tumble through the hatch. You took some digging, but it's here. But it's there, says Charlie. The map was right. It means there's hope, Eddie. Whatever it is that Enoch did, we can undo it. We can be happy to give... You shoved down the stairs. Eddie? Says Charlie. Wayne is gone once again. There's nothing here but you in the Howling Void. Do you repent? Do you repent for your crime? Says Kanika. Are you talking to me? She's not. She's not here. But my cousin Tabitha, the one you want, I want. I haven't. I, will, I haven't stepped foot in the town before the couple of days ago. Why should I be? I'm not responsible for any of this. I'm sorry you're dead. You got to let this go, man. Get over it. Yeah, let's go with this one. She's not here, but my cousin Tabitha is the one you want. I have. I haven't stepped foot in this town before a couple of days ago. There, let's go with that one. You must answer for the crimes committed by your scarlet blood, says Oscar. Until you do, I cannot die. I want to die, please. I have been alone in the dark for so long, says Rosalina. All I ask is for some of your years. To pay for the years that were taken from me. My life was stolen from me, says Oscar. I want some of yours, mutters Kanika. It is only fair. The sins of the father are to be laid upon the child upon the children. Forfeit your years and I will finally leave. What happens if I refuse? You mutter. Then I will stay. I will stay until I get what I am owed. I don't understand. You will live a sort of life and I will finally be satisfied. I will have justice. I will finally die. I will leave this house at last. How much sort would my life be? That isn't for you to know. Just as it wasn't for me to know. One day, sooner than you'd like, you will die. The sentence has been handed down. Make your choice. The smell hits you, that now familiar, wet, unwell odour. What an annoying pest you are, but you can't keep me out for long. It seems you've exhausted its powers. Holding all those bodies hostage must have been quite taxing. Come along, Kerry. It's desperate, but it has no power over you. There's no need to bow to the will of such a frayed and broken consciousness. Leave it to fester. Where will Oscar... Let's see. But I can't just leave the ghost here. What about my friends? What happens to them if I leave? Where will Oscar and Rosalina live if the ghost stays? Yeah, the thing is, Kerry doesn't care. Like these, all these options, Kerry doesn't care about these. She's really self-interested and she just wants to get out of town. So yeah, she's just gonna leave. You're right, I want to help, but I just can't justify the cost. You're right, is it worth it? How do I get out? Screw this sins of the father crap. I don't owe this ghost a thing. Let's get out of here. Get me the hell out of here, Wayne. Yeah, let's go with that one. Screw this sins of the father crap. I don't owe this ghost a thing. Let's get out of here. You don't need my help. Close your eyes. Feel for the stairs. Close your eyes. You fumble in the darkness, reaching out your hands and grasping the air until the, you, your palm finds wood. It's the staircase. You can feel it under your hands. You begin your ascent. Good. You've made it out of the pit. His overpowering smell returns as you place a confident foot on the wooden floor of what you assume must be Rosalind's room. 
You open your eyes and you try to hold your breath. You feel a hand on your back, you sudden, knowing what it's attached to. Don't fall for it. Keep feeling your way forward. You continue, you feel the door frame under your palm and then, stu then the study walls of the hallway beyond. Wayne's palm continues to gently urge you forward. You stumble into a corridor between annex, the annex of the library. The real world is swimming back into focus. Good, the main door is just ahead. You feel a southern swing pushes you forward. You fall towards the entrance, your legs still unsure of the ground beneath you as the door flies open. You're outside, it's real this time. The cool autumn breeze blows small pieces of dried leaves across the steps of the library. You've made the right choice. It would have been so easy to fall for its tricks. I'm proud that you didn't. Be seeing you, says Wayne. He leaves before you can say anything in response. Thank God you made it out, Kerry. I went to get Mum when I realised you hadn't left the library with the rest of us. I figured if anyone knew what to do, it would be her. I see someone beat me to the punt, says Silby. It sounds like you had quite the evening. I suppose I'll have to find another place for me and Rosalind to stay. This was such a disaster. I'm so sorry you had to. You've had to. I'm so sorry you have brought you all. I've brought something. Let's repeat that. This is such a disaster. I'm so sorry to have brought you all into that house. I should have left the place to rot. Do a do-over. Let's go. Let's go. I wasn't about to give up part of my life to make amends for something I didn't do. Let's go with that. It's okay. It's just a house. We don't even own it. And even if we did, that ghost was asking for quite the bet down payment. Oscar's right. And besides, there's no walking this back. The spirit is far too strong for that now. Let's go with that. Tabitha has at least one extra property. We hang out. We hang out there this morning. I will probably wind up getting in touch with her first thing tomorrow. There really isn't a lot of wiggle room in this town without going through your family. Yo, Mr. G, we've got a spare room, and I don't think my parents would really care, says Zane. That's really sweet of you, Zane, but Dad, uh, just take him up on it, says Rosalina. You're right. You're right. Thank you, Zane. I'll figure of something out. I'll figure out something more long term in the morning, says Oscar. Dope. I'm gonna I'm gonna peace out then and let my folks know. See you later, Rosalina. See you later, Mr. G. Zane walks off down the road. To think that ghost is actually real. I mean, I know we didn't have any hard evidence on us, but we all vividly experienced the same thing. Stella's got to be over the moon right now. Where is Stella? says Oscar. I kind of thought you'd be excited to be rattling off theories by now. Oh, She's just standing there by herself. That isn't like her, says Kanika. She okay? Says Kerry. I was wondering the same thing. I just saw a ghost and she's just standing off by herself. Which like fair which like fair that would be a normal reaction from anyone else who'd just seen a ghost, but this is Stella we're talking about. Let's go with Hey Stella, wanna hang with the rest of the class? Let's go with that one. What? Oh. I'm okay, I'll see you later, says Stella. She hurries off down the road. What if she's possessed? I think she took the brunt of things in there. No wonder she has a hard, she's having a hard time right now. So we go after her, she doesn't seem okay. I'm starting to think Stella might be a bit of a flake. Guess she's hit her limit. She'll be fine. I guess he hit her limit. Yeah, let's go with that. I guess he hit her limit. Says Kerry. Should we go after her? I think she just needs some time to herself. Stella's never been the kind to say her burden, says Sylby. And I doubt that'll change just because somebody goes chasing after her. If anything, it will make her clam up even more. 
She's a strong girl, so it'll be okay. I'm honestly surprised that you and Zane are the only ones heading out right now. You've all been through something awful, and each and every one of you needs rest. Especially you, Kanika. We don't want that cold of yours to get any worse. God, what a disaster this whole night has been. I had no idea it would turn out this like this. I'm so sorry, everyone. Stop apologizing, Dad. We're the ones who don't have a house anymore. We don't even have the library. Let's go with... Yeah, let's go with there's another carving in there. One of those things are tied to everything supernatural that's been happening. Yeah, I wonder. One is a coincidence, but two of them on on back-to-back -back nights. And if you and Stella are right, and there's another one in the clinic. I'm sorry, I'm a little lost. Have you been finding carvings around town? I'm sure everyone here could stand around theorizing about this and that all night long. There's plenty of time for, for that tomorrow. Yes, so she knows something because she's trying to cut off the conversation. Yeah, I'm not going to mention Wayne because Kerry isn't going to mention that. Let's go, what do we do about the library? We bar the doors, make sure everybody knows to stay clear. We just can't tell them it's, a meg it's mega haunted, even if folks believe us. That'll just make them want to investigate for themselves, says Kanika. Or say there's a gas leak, that should do the trick at least for a while. Silby, is there a chance this goes away on its own? I'm not really an authority on these things, says Silby, but it doesn't seem interested in fading away. Okay, that's settled then. We board it up, we say there's a gas leak, says Kanika. Just hope no one gets curious, I guess. It's the best we can do for now, says Oscar. What was it like being a puppet? Let's go with that. They all glance away. It hurt, said Oscar. I don't... Why, did, why didn't I make Rosalina stay behind? I can't believe I let that happen to her. Dad, this might be the overwhelming pain, exhaustion, talking, but shut up. I love you. None of this is your fault. Okay, says Rosalina from the stairs. I had no idea what I was going to say until the words were already spilling out, but I remember each and every one of them. It's like they were burnt into my memory. You poor soul, says Silby. I can't imagine what you've been through. Do any of you know who you were supposed to be? No idea, says Kanika. There was no context, nothing, adds Oscar. But there was a weird feeling like an overwhelming guilt. I was mostly just scared, says Rosalina. I didn't feel any of those things. I felt, I don't know how to describe it. I felt powerful, says Kanika. Let's go with that one. Be all conscious the whole time? Everyone glanced at each other. Yeah, says Kanika. I'm pretty sure we remember everything, at least up until that guy showed up and snapped us out of it. Wayne, he's been following Kerry. He's Wayne, he's been following Kerry around. What did he say to you? You don't need to trouble Kerry for any details. No one pay any mind to that man. He's just a drifter. He'll be gone soon enough. In the meantime, steer clear and he won't make trouble. Yeah, so they know about Wayne now, obviously. Let's go with... I spent a lot of time with Wayne in there. Yeah, I noticed. You could smell him as soon as he snapped out of it. What happened? Did he hurt you? It's part of the reason I left the ghost behind. He really didn't want me to make a deal with it. He crossed a ditzling under his boot. It was pretty scary. No, but he gave me really bad vibes. Let's go with that. No, but he gave me really bad vibes. Yeah, says Kanika. Like I said, let's not trouble carry around about him. Just stay away, all of you. I guess I should head back, you mutter. We should probably get going too. I'm starting to get chilly out, and I don't want to keep Zen's parents up too late. It'll be all it'll be it will be I'll be over late tonight with some bedding and hot tea and a half and a half miles bring your groceries in the morning, says Silby. Don't be a stranger. Let us know if you need anything, okay? 
I believe it's time for me to get my daughter home as well. But, says Kanika, Kanika dear, you haven't been feeling well. You need to get some rest. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow, Carrie. But I'm wired and I want to talk about stuff. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. If I manage to get out of bed, then yeah. I don't know. I'm stuck here, aren't I? Let's go with that one. Yeah, I'm stuck here, aren't I? You mutter. I guess we all are, says Kanika. Kanika wearily treks back to the general store. I'll walk you home after I finish getting Kanika her tea, and we can chat about just what happened. I'll be just a moment. You're too tired to say no. Sylvie so leaves. You make yourself comfortable for a few minutes while you wait. After everything that's happened tonight, the normalcy of sitting on a quiet, empty road feels like a priceless treasure. I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty of calling your cousin and telling her about what happened tonight. She wasn't exactly thrilled to hear from me, but I think I'm bl I, I think I blunted her anger as much as I could, states Sylvie. Shall we head out for our walk? Time to go home. You once again find yourself on a long trek back to the estate. The night feels cold, the crunch of leaves beneath your feet deafening in the quiet weirdness. Well, wild, weird, yeah, wildness. You can see all the ditch things around as well. Let's stop here for a bit. These old bones need a moment to rest. Let's go with... There's ditchlings everywhere. There they are, and I'm afraid that there still would be... They are, and I'm afraid that they still would be this numerous. Even if you managed to exercise the spirit you encountered tonight, its presence was merely a symptom of the rot of this place, rather than its cause. People, unfortunately, just go are just going to have to get used to the sight of these things in the coming days. Silby. What is Wayne? He's just a man, says Silby. Street smarts. Who does he think you are? There's no way in hell that way that Wayne is just a man. No, absolutely not. He's not just a fucking man. What the hell do you think I'm think I'd buy that after tonight? Let's go with that. The smile briefly fades from her face. Language, Kerry. We don't use words like that around here. And in response to your accusations, it's not exactly polite to serve people's medical history. I may I may not have the Hippocratic Oath, but I still respect the privacy of others. Let's go with, are you a witch? Let's go with that one. She laughs, surprised by your question. No, dear, though some might call me one. I'm just an old woman who fancies herself a bit of a healer. Look, after tonight I know that magic is real. Do you do magic or not? Yeah, let's go with that one. Carrie's had enough of people dancing around the bushes. What is magic anyway? I just know some trade secrets passed along the family line. But it's no different than the child of a mechanic knowing what to do with an engine or the child of a carpenter knowing how to build a makeshift chair. That's enough rest that's enough rest for me. Let's carry on for a bit. Yes, he knows magic. I wish there'd been a street smart's answer to pick up the fact that she was lying about that. You and Sylvie walk deeper into the woods. You're getting close to the estate. One last rest and we'll get you home. Why can't I just go home like my real home? You poor dear, this is your real home. It's hard to have the sensitivity to the feeling to feel these things, but on some level it called you back here, says Silby. Nobody really leaves to holler. At least not forever. Call it a quirk of the town. No, 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 no. Oh my god, you're right, aren't you? Excuse me? Let's go with no.
Let's go with that one. Yeah, no. Like, Carrie just starts denying it. Oh my, you look absolutely horrified. I was just pulling your leg, dear. People leave town all the time. We just haven't been blessed with most frequent public transportation. Let's go with that one. There was a stone carving of a goat's head and a pack of wolves in that basement. There's something similar in the mines last night too. A circle of arms and chains. Both of them gave me visions. Was there now? That's quite an interesting development, says Silby. Perhaps we can discuss these visions over tea. My grandmother had a special blend that supposedly helped with dreams and visions. I'll be sure to have some ready tomorrow. Maybe it'll help us piece things together. Let's go with that one. As long as your grandma's tea, your grandma's special blend tastes better than that char you gave Avery yesterday. You sound just like Miles, Kerry. We sort of have plenty of milk and honey on hand to cover up the taste. But Kerry doesn't care what her family's done, and she's not going to say Wayne didn't want to make a deal with the ghost. Yep. So it has got to go. Can we get moving again? I am. The estate shouldn't be much further, says Silby. You and Silby trek through the remi remainder of the woods and find yourself on the outskirts of the estate. I'm looking forward to continuing our chat tomorrow once you've had some time to rest. Good luck handling Tabitha, says Silby. I tried to soften her up over the phone, but there's only so much softening you can do with someone that prickly. Bless her heart. Get a good night's rest, Kerry. You've earned it. Silby heads back through the woods, leaving you alone to face Tabitha. You open the door to your estate as quietly as you can, only to find your cousin anxiously pacing in the foyer. She's been waiting for you. I see you finally decided to drag your sorry ass back here, snapped Tabitha. I didn't even know what to say. I told you so many times to stay out of trouble, to keep me posted about where you are, to come home in a timely manner. What is the point of saying it all again? Clearly you just don't care how your actions affect me. And I don't know how to make you care, says Tabitha. Yeah, she's just got a street smart to lie. I'm really sorry. I mean it. If you're sorry, act like it. I'm done arguing. Good night. Your cousin walks off, leaving you alone. You don't even notice yourself entering the guest room and falling into bed. Suddenly you're just there, buried under your family's musty covers. It's Wednesday night. Nearly half a week has passed since you first arrived in town, and little over half a week remains until the bus comes to take you home. The spirit of Charles Saw Jr. now commands the entirety of the city hall, a swirling void of wrath and despair that the people of the town will have to learn to, learn to ignore. Disaster looms its, looms its, tall, its tallest yet over Scarlet Hollow. This is the end of chapter three. Thank you very much for playing. We hope that have hope to have chapter four released before the end of the year, and they are planning to do so. So that's the end of Kerry's story so far. And as you can see, it is the darkest timeline. I know in our previous Let's Play series that Jason uh, took the option of sacrificing his own health to basically get the ghost gone, but I get the sinking suspicion that we are playing into other people's hands by doing that, and I. I'm going to be straight up honest, I don't trust Sylby. I think that she's probably somehow involved, if not the original witch herself. But we'll have to see to find out. I've been Cornus Knight, this has been Scarlet Hollow, The Darkest Timeline. And I shall see you all again very soon for episode 4. Goodbye everyone. Please like and subscribe, it helps me a lot. And have a lovely day.